What is up everybody? This is Sam of Cinema 3D and today we are going to be talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is the uh, sequel to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, a movie that when I saw it I was just completely blown away. Visuals like I had never seen in an animated movie before, it looked like a comic book literally came to life. It's done a little bit better than the original Hulk movie did, but uh, we'll talk about that another time. In that movie, we met Miles Morales as he was becoming Spider-Man, followed a similar uh, story arc to the one that Peter Parker would have, one that I guess that pretty much all Spider-Man have within the spider canon of, um, you know, them learning that with great power comes great responsibility, um, learning what it means to be a hero, and also serving as kind of a great coming-of-age story of a young man growing up, and also of a hero taking on his responsibility to serve his city. Spider-Man movies tend to be some of the best superhero movies ever made, and I think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was one of the best superhero movies ever made, and one of the best animated movies ever made. I mean, it just completely changed the game. And so that's a lot of hype to live up to when you're going in as a sequel. And this movie didn't just meet the expectations that were set from the original movie, but exceeded those expectations, or exceeded my expectations, I should say. For this movie. In the current time that we are living, we are getting superhero movies faster than you can get a Little Caesars pizza, and with that there has been a slight decrease in quality over the last few years. I mean, you know, Endgame was great and then Joker was great, but since then I've seen a dip in quality of superhero movies where now if you see a great one you are just blown away that they could make that. And this movie served as not only a great superhero movie, but one of the best that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this movie had everything. It had heart, it was slow where it needed to be slow, it was fast where it needed to be fast. Visuals like I had never seen in an animated movie, I personally think exceeding the visuals that were done in the first movie. This movie does a great job of following a similar story pattern that's been told since Spider-Man 2, where we see the Spider-Man character learning how to balance life between being a hero and being either a normal college student or being a high schooler, dealing with life with parental figures, dealing with romantic issues, without, no matter what it is, trying to balance that life and learning that the call to being a hero is not a luxurious life, that there's a lot of risk involved in it and that there's a lot of sacrifice and really hitting home with the great power comes great responsibility theme of the Spider-Man movies and stories and how this hero has to learn what he has to do and what he has to give up and how hard it is to be a hero and this movie did that story beautifully probably one of the best tellings of it i've ever seen since spider-man 2. i actually think it'd be hard to pick what the best spider-man movie is i kind of want to go and sit down and watch them all again because this movie is honestly reaching for that title i mean some of the best visuals i've ever seen in an animated movie one of the best stories i've ever seen you can go into this one without ever seeing Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse and know exactly what is going on. And while it also serves as a great sequel to Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, because it's building on that story while also telling a story that can stand on its own. And every character was done just. Obviously, Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy, or uh, Spider-Gwen in these um, movies, as that is her role, were both told amazing, both beautiful arcs, and um, honestly, some of the best characters I've seen told in a superhero movie in a very long time. I don't want to give away too much about the movie as this is a spoiler-free review, but uh, the basic plot points are exactly that. It is Miles Morales now living his life as Spider-Man, having to uh, deal with some school troubles, having to deal with lying to his parents about being Spider-Man this whole time, and with that, we see a great movie of uh, the relationship between specifically Miles Morales and his mother and father, as well as his friendship with Gwen. And like I said, this movie takes time to breathe. It takes time to develop every relationship that is shown and makes you really feel about the stakes of the movie and uh, the risks that are being taken by Miles and what he's going through in this movie that by the time it ends, uh, I'm not going to say anything, but you are going to leave um, extremely happy, but wanting another Miles Morales adventure. So if you were wondering if you should see Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, the astounding answer is yes, you can go and see this movie with anybody. I think all ages can enjoy it. I think uh, if you aren't even necessarily a big comic book or Spider-Man fan, you can enjoy it. 
And of course, if you are a Spider-Man fan, you are going to love this movie because there are just so many small details and Easter eggs that are spread throughout this movie. And um, there's always time that you can uh, catch them as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review of uh, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I loved it. I'm probably going to be seeing it again and re-watching all the Spider-Man movies because it just got me in the mood for those. So let me know what you thought of it. Let me know what your favorite Spider-Man movie is down in the comments below. And we will see you guys next time.